So normally I would do this type of thing in a walkthrough, but for this particular screencast, I actually want to look at some documentation with you. So uh, instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you over to the lesson here, and I'm just gonna work in the playground that, that starts off this lesson, and we're just gonna experiment a little bit. Um, and what we're focusing on in this lesson is how to access Java documentation so that we can figure out the different types of things that a string can do. So, you know, it's, it's clear with strings as objects that there are some new features of Java objects compared with the primitive types that we've used in the past. I can use this dot notation to access, um, you know, in this case, a method on that string that returns the length of the characters inside this particular string. So in this case, uh, hello.world has 13 characters. If I add two more characters to it, you'll see that it prints 15. So this is printing the number of characters in between that opening double quotes and the closing double quotes. Down here, this is an even more interesting function called split that seems to be by the return type that I'm using over here, dividing the string into parts in some way. And so we'll look at a little bit about you know these particular functions, but also different ways to find out about strings. So the, the way that you do this is um, if you Google Java string, and I'm gonna add 14 because that's the version of Java that we're currently using. Um, but you know one of the uh, top hits should be uh, this Oracle Help Center page. Now, I can't, uh, I, you know, I, I will apologize on behalf of Java documentation because maybe it doesn't look like the most modern thing that you've ever seen. This particular site, this particular page, maybe you think it could be prettier or easier to use and I wouldn't disagree with that. But here's the thing. This is the Bible of Java. This is the authoritative, whatever your, your good book is, this is the authoritative information. This is written by the people that write Java. So Java documentation is particularly the official Java documentation for the core parts of the language is always, you know, you can read tutorials and those are great. You can read these lessons and those are great for learning. But when you need to look stuff up, need a reference manual, this is it. So this is for uh, the class string. Now there's a lot of things on here that are not gonna make any sense to you yet. That's cool, we'll get there. By the end of the semester, by the end of these lessons, I hope that you will understand a lot more about what you see on this particular page. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a high level overview of how to use this in a useful way. So again, this is sort of like a reference book or a dictionary. You may not understand everything in there, but when you need to look up a word, you kinda of know how to use it. So let's use this documentation to figure out how to discover what string methods are available to us and what they might do. So what we'll see here at the top of this is a little bit of human text that explains what strings are for and a little bit about how to use them. And this is usually kind of interesting to read. You might understand a lot of this. Um, the, um, but you know what follows, and this is common for Java objects in their documentation, you have a little bit of human written text that talks about kind of what this is for. And then what we have is a lot of sort of um, structured data down here um, that allows us to quickly sort of explore some of what strings are, are capable of. So I'm going to sk skip the constructor summary. This will uh, be something that we'll return to later. For now, I'm going to scroll down to the method summary. And what we see here in handy dandy table format is a number of things that look like this. So this looks like the first part of a method declaration, right? I've got um, the method name, which is called care at. Uh, I have something that looks like a parameter list, right, in between parentheses. You can see other ones down here. Here's another one that takes two parameters. And on the left side, I've got a, something that is a type. And so this almost looks like the first three parts of a method declaration. Now, there is an implementation for this method somewhere, but it's not in the, the documentation. Instead, what the documentation provides is an English language description of what this method does. And this is our first example of the importance of documentation. So there is code that performs this task that is part of Java somewhere. We could find it, we could read it together. But when you're reading documentation, you typically don't wanna see the code. You wanna see somebody explain it, you know? Um, and so here's a single one sentence description of what this particular uh, method does. Now, if I click on it, it's gonna take me to an even more, um, more uh, complete 
definition, right? So this one actually uh, has uh, three sentences as opposed to one. This is a simple method. So we'll, we'll experiment with it in a, minute, in a minute. You'll see what it does. But, um, you know, it tells me returns. You can ignore this for now. We will talk about what this means later. So this will be another part that'll, uh, that'll be clear to you. Okay, but I'm just going to jump back, uh, if I can, uh, to the table. Maybe it doesn't like that. Okay, we'll go forward, I guess. All right, so, and, and you can see that there's a long list of these, right? You know, and every one of them, you know, get bytes, and codes the string and a sequence of bytes, blah, blah, blah. A lot of this stuff you'll never use. I was thinking, I was going through this before, and I was like, I don't know, I might have used like half of these in my, in my you know, work with Java over the years. Um, but, you know, they're here if you need them. And the right way to approach this is sort of like a dictionary or like an encyclopedia. Don't memorize it. You don't read it from cover to cover. You consult it when you are working with this particular type of object, in, case it's, in this case a string, and you need to do something with it. Um, and you kind of are here to look up whether or not maybe that's already built into the string or how can you use built-in string methods to solve a problem. We're going to give you some practice with that. But let's get some practice at working with one of the methods from this list. So um, I'm going to, I've got caret here. Um, and I'm going to go back over here. Um, and we'll use that on greedy. So uh, caret uh, takes a single int argument and, uh, called index and it says returns the care value at the specified index. Okay, and it returns a care. So let's just experiment with this a little bit and, and think about what it does. So I'm using the name of the variable that contains the string dot care at. That's a, a difference when we work with um, object methods is that we don't just use the method name, we use the name of the variable dot method name. And now uh, this method expects an index that, and let's use the index zero and sort of let's see what happens here. Um, oh, and I need, I need to be able to spell. That's useful. Okay. H. We printed H. What does that mean? Um, well, you know, zero is supposed to be the index in the string and H is the first character in the string, and it's a, a capital H. So let's change this and see what happens. Okay, now I printed a lowercase h. So we're on to something here. Um, let's try to use a different index. Let's use index 5. Okay, now it printed a comma. Well, 5, index 5, is the sixth character in the string. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The sixth character is a comma. So this is making sense. Here's, here's one example. Um, Again, the walkthrough here is not designed to introduce you to all of the Java functions, uh, string functions. Over the next few homework problems, we will start to introduce you to these. And when we do, we'll typically provide links to the documentation. So the other question you might have is, you know, how do I know that strings will do a particular thing? Um, you know, what, when should I consult the Java documentation? When should I not? When should I assume that I need to perform that? I need to implement it myself. And that's a tough question to answer. Um, one thing I'll say is that after you have spent a while doing this, you start to develop an intuition about the type of things that should be possible. So even when I'm using other programming languages, if I'm working with the string, I believe, I trust that there are certain built-in features that I can use because they're very, very common when you're working with strings. So one example is the, the function that, that was in the example, the playground example when we started, which is called split. Um, and split, and you can see this is another interesting example of uh, an overloaded method. We talked about that uh, in the last lesson. So there's two versions of split have the same name that take different arguments. So splitting a string by dividing it at particular boundaries is incredibly common when, work with, when working with strings. And so if I was using some new programming language called foobar and I had a string, I would think, there's gotta be some built-in way to split this and I would go figure out what it was. And hopefully if foobar is a sane language, I find it. If I don't, I might actually think of not using foobar anymore because stuff like this should sort of come batteries included. So, so again, it's not a clear cut answer. It's sort of intuition that you develop. Um, but again, you know, the, the purpose of documentation like this is not to read, it's not to memorize, it's to know that it's there, and then when you're working on solving problems with strings, as you will be over the next couple of homework problems, just keep in mind that you might want to, if you need to do a particular thing to a string, you might want to check this table quickly first to see that if the to see if the string will already do that for you.